welcome back to the Hunter's Quest podcast. This is your host, Hunter McWaters. It's great to be with you guys. And um, this week, I'm going to have another conversation with my guest from a few weeks ago, Timothy Alberino. And, um, you know, at the end of that podcast, we kind of just touched the surface on all this um, new kind of wild information coming out from official channels like the Pentagon about um, what they're calling UAPs, um, what most of us kind of think of as UFOs. Um, but as we talk about in this episode, this stuff has really moved out of the realm of conspiracy and possibility to uh, actual recognized fact um, that there are these um, unidentified, whatever you want to call them, um, these uh, objects that are moving around, floating around, flying around in our atmosphere. So Anyway, this one um, is kind of timely, and I decided to put this out uh, right now because um, actually the day that we recorded this podcast, just a few days ago, the Pentagon released a new video of a flying metallic orb in Iraq, and um, it's all just very interesting about how the narrative is being controlled and slowly released. Um, and, you know, again, it might sound crazy, but this is not, um, speculation anymore, folks. This is, uh, legit stuff that's happening. So I think it's super interesting and I wanted to have Timothy on again and talk about it. Um, I know there's a lot of new listeners out there and, uh, we have my, uh, new, or I'm sorry, we have my trusty standby supporters that have been with me for a long time. I appreciate all you guys for hanging in there, and I, I want to say welcome to the new folks tuning in to some of this uh, new subject matter. And um, it's very interesting, it's very timely, it's stuff I think that we need to talk about. And, um, and don't worry, we're still going to talk about hunting too, but um, I just uh, I had to I had to get Timothy back on and, and hit some of these topics because it's important. And um, I wanted to go ahead and give some shout outs for some folks that left me reviews uh, on the podcast. So if you're listening, a Aaron, um, gas station head. And this last one, I don't know if it's just a bunch of random letters, but it's like, you woods or something. <laughs> it's O I U Y U. Anyway, a bunch of letters, you know who you are. If that was you, um, if you guys hit me up on Instagram at the hunter's quest, I'll send you some swag in the mail. I appreciate those. And those reviews are super important, guys. If you're a new listener, if you like the show, please leave me a rating and review. If you leave me a written review, um, I'll give you a shout out on the show and send you some swag in the mail. But those are huge. You know, um, like, like and subscribe this video. If you're listening to the audio version, this is also on YouTube. Please go ahead and, and subscribe to the channel. Like this video, comment, share it with friends and family, and again, rate it on the podcast app. Um, if you didn't hear the last episode with Timothy um, from two or three weeks ago on Easter, um, go ahead and check that out. That thing blew up on uh, on YouTube. It has like over, I think, over a hundred thousand views right now, which is like um, just way past what I normally get on these video podcasts. So uh, definitely struck a chord. It's another reason why I wanted to have Timothy back on. So if you didn't hear that episode, go back and check that one out. Um, definitely check this episode out. Um, and, uh, and like I said, like, subscribe, comment, uh, and share with friends and family. That's how we get the word out about this stuff and, uh, how I can continue bringing this content to you guys. Um, and, and lastly, you know, I wanted to end with a verse, something that I used to do a lot. I've kind of haven't done it as much lately, not on purpose, just kind of forgot about it. But, you know, we, we delve into some pretty difficult, um, you know, tough topics here and, it can be a little heavy, so um, I just want to leave you guys and remind you um, that you know we have a good God, and um, He wants the best for us. He loves us, and um, He's not going to hang us out to dry. So I just want to leave you with Luke ten nineteen. This is Jesus talking, and He says, "Behold, I have given you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions, and over all the powers of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means harm you." So if we have faith in Jesus, if Jesus is our Lord and Savior, nothing can by any means harm us, no matter how big, bad, or scary. 
Um, he that is in us is greater than he that is in this world. So have hope in that, have faith in that, but keep your eyes open and be aware of the darkness that's, that's all around us and seems to be um, escalating and, um, and getting just crazier. So enjoy this episode, guys. Leave me a comment, leave me a review, subscribe to the YouTube channel. I appreciate all you guys and uh, enjoy. So I'm, we're going to jump in here, guys, but uh, welcome to the Hunter's Quest podcast. This is Hunter McWaters, your host. I'm here again with uh, a new friend, I'll say, Mr. Timothy Alberino. Nice to be with you again. <laughs> you too, man. Thanks for joining me. So anyway, we were talking about orbs and stuff. Um, you were saying that a new video got released today. What What was that? I didn't even see that. Pentagon released a video today as part of its all-domain anomaly resolution office investigation of, uh, it's an orb. It's your typical silver metallic orb, and it's in a, it's, it's somewhere in the Middle East, and I think it's Afghanistan. It's from 2022, and it's it was captured on a, on a drone camera, and the camera is surveilling somebody, some kind of a compound or something, and and this orb flies into the frame and it's clear as day it's your typical orb your typical metallic orb and i say typical because these things are very very commonplace uh you see them all over the world people are you know increasingly because of the increasing the corresponding with the increase in the in the quality of our cameras on our phones people are being able to capture some of this stuff because usually these things are moving very fast and in this case it, it was moving pretty fast but yeah what makes this unique is this was a um, this was a disclosure by the Pentagon's all domain anomaly resolution office. So this was an official uh, this was an a, an official release of this video by the Pentagon. So we're not talking about some photoshopped video or something like that, some edited video. Okay, how do I see Pentagon it? What do I search for to see it? Uh, it's probably on the front page of Fox News right now, I would guess, so <laughs> foxnews.com. Okay. Um, I'll bet it's on the front page. And again, this is an official release, so this isn't just some random video on YouTube. And it's quite astounding that we are openly talking about orbs at this point, because the orbs, the orb phenomenon is part and parcel with the the larger ufo phenomenon it's it's a function mm -hmm. of the ufo phenomenon um orbs sometimes are seen discharging from saucers so um these things oh, are sorry. in my opinion these things are certainly reconnaissance vehicles reconnaissance technology the orbs non-human reconnaissance vehicles and they come in various sh shapes and sizes the metallic ones um are there's actually there's there's probably a dozen or so videos that you can find online. I'm watching it right orbs. now, by the way. That's why I'm not looking at it. These metallic orbs are 100% legitimate. In fact, some people have found them like they found them in their yards, like the, the ones that have malfunctioned and crashed. People have them and they have very strange properties. <laughs> um, they resonate. I would not take that they, in my house. They, they resonate. They have interesting um, seamless uh, components to them. Um and and uh, they obviously are flying around in the sky using some kind of an unknown propulsion system because they're not drones. They don't have propellers and they're move, they yeah. move way faster than drones. And they display all of the typical aerial phenomenon, aerial maneuvering that, you know, a flying saucer does. They can take hard right turns and so forth. So the same technology we're dealing with, the same kind of technology that we find in the saucers and the cigar shaped craft and the walnut shaped craft and all these different craft that we've known about for decades. And it's just really surreal that the Pentagon is openly talking about these metallic orbs. They're all over the world. Um, some people have suggested that there's a grid of these things, that it, maybe it's a defense system for some species living in the earth. I say in the earth, the inner earth. Um, or is it just surveillance? Certainly surveillance, but these orbs also... Is, um, go ahead. Go ahead, sorry. No, I was going to say, is the Pentagon openly saying that, like, they don't know what it is and, like, the technology is, like, not yeah, the theirs and better than... we don't know what it is. Okay. 
and uh of course today this this video was released during the um the subcommittee uh on the on the ufo phenomenon and and the pentagon's and the pentagon's investigation ongoing investigation into the phenomenon i view this committee the subcommittee that's being um that's being uh, chaired uh, by Kristen Gildebrand as a dog and pony show. They're not really going to get any kind of hardcore information, although the release of this video is quite astounding. The Pentagon is being very tight-lipped. Uh, even though it's being forced to disclose certain things, the narrative is being very carefully controlled. But these orbs are nothing new, and I want to stress that. We've known about, and I say we, let's say the UFO community has known about these orbs for decades. Yeah. Um, again, people have them in their, like, there's people who have them in their garage. <laughs> they, they, and it, and it is these orbs, it's the exact same size. Now, when we talk about orbs, it's, an, it's important to distinguish between two kinds of orbs. There's the hard metallic orbs, uh, of which this uh, was, which was featured in this video, this particular video. And there are the, the, the glowing sort of ethereal orbs. Right. that are somewhat transparent like when i've heard people like in their house like oh i see floating orbs in the house or something like something spiritual but you're talking about yeah metallic both flying both orbs. technology both of these things are technology um the metallic orbs as i said certainly are reconnaissance um are reconnaissance vehicles reconnaissance drones um but also i think they're capable of deploying weaponry i've seen videos of these things you and i were talking before we started recording right. about i was asking that... about a video that i saw a few years ago where a spacex um i don't know exploded. rocket i guess yeah, exploded rocket. on the uh tarmac and you can see a orb fly right before like right by it at high speed yep. before it explodes and there are a lot more videos like that of things exploding in orbs even ufos by the way even saucers and stuff exploding or or, or disappearing or apparently um uh, some sort of a discharge from these orbs is able to destroy uh, rockets and 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 as i said even other ufo craft um so they're not just reconnaissance they have the capability to as i said to discharge some kind of a technology electromagnetic yeah. or some kind of a, a some kind of um a perhaps even a gravitic or more likely microwave technology uh, atomic technology that uh, it, it, for example in this case that we're talking about that and that was about six years ago that rocket that uh um the spacex a spacex rocket you know apparently the orb ignited the fuel assuming that that was a real video i mean that video right. could have been doctored but that orb looks sure. exactly the same like exactly the same as the one that was released that by the pentagon today and most of these orbs on these videos which i think are legitimate look exactly the same by the way there's even video which is legitimate um i don't know exactly how to reference you to it except to say that it is an orb <laughs> just like these orbs yeah like the one that was released today by the pentagon mm -hmm. that is responsible for making crop circles you can see it actually making oh a crop i think i've circle. seen one of those um and so these orbs are able the to... crop just like whoosh, just like flattens. that's right yeah. yeah these orbs are able to discharge some kind of technology for different things um and again, it is important to remember that there are two different, when we talk about orbs, there's these hard, and they are metallic. They are exactly what they look like because people have them. Um, Wait, and okay. then there are, and then there are the, the glowing, How... <laughs> go ahead, transparent go ones. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, like, why would someone just keep that in their garage? But anyway, it doesn't, it's not really I would. there. <laughs> would I mean, you, like, uh, take it somewhere or, like, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I mean. Open it up? You're better off just keeping it in your house, honestly. But they resonate, they vibrate, that you know. What if they come it's... back after to try to retrieve that thing? Well, they haven't so far. <laughs> you know, the question is, uh, is there a grid of these things around the world? What is their function? Are we looking at different factions and when I say factions, I mean non-human factions, perhaps extraterrestrial, perhaps native to the Earth, perhaps inhabiting the inner Earth. Are we looking at different factions encountering each other? Are we looking at a grid system, a defense system um, that one of these factions has deployed all over the Earth, you know, a defense grid? There's all kinds of ideas. But yeah. one thing we can say with certainty is what we're talking about right now, these metallic orbs, this is real. This is not... Yeah. Uh, hyperbole it's not speculation it's as i always say 
stone cold fact. Yeah, I mean, if it's being officially released by the Pentagon, that's like I said, that's not uh, that's not a tabloid newspaper. No, <laughs> as part of the All Domain Anomaly Resolution okay, Office's so investigation. If the listeners out there, there may be a lot of new listeners, and there might be old listeners as well. But um, t- I brought Timothy back because I feel like we scratched the surface a little bit on some of these topics that he goes over in his book, and I wanted to just go a little deeper on something we touched on at the very end of our last podcast. And um, a lot of people saw that podcast. So that's another reason why I wanted to have Timothy back on, but also it's just something that I've always really been interested in. So the, the main kind of thrust of the conversation I want to talk about was this new alien disclosure stuff coming from the government um, and how that may relate to something we can address later, uh, which would be transhumanism. But something I want to ask you about Tim um, off the bat because it's interesting to me um you know we say like the narrative or disclosure and stuff like that what role do you think the government is really playing in these disclosures why are they doing it why are they doing it this way is there some kind of agenda behind it what what are your thoughts on that whole well, deal well when we say disclosure first of all wh- what we're talking about is disclosure of an alien presence on planet earth that's what we're talking about <laughs> that's yeah. what disclosure means right and uh for and you have to understand that this is all very new the government is not in the habit of talking about ufos not historically recently yes and only since 2017 which we'll talk about in a minute but before 2017 the government was extremely tight-lipped this was not a topic that you were going to find any government um institution talking about openly uh, the 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 UFO phenomenon was and still is, but was highly classified. Probably the hot the 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 most um, rigorously um, obfuscated uh, subject at the Pentagon. And I say Pentagon, but the pen, I I don't really like saying Pentagon because it's this is not where knowledge of UFOs. Um, really exists. It, it, it's not the Pentagon. I say this all the time. I believe that uh, there are a handful of people at the Pentagon who really, who really have the need to know regarding yeah. the details of the phenomenon, the UFO phenomenon, because um, the people who are in the know, who have the need to know, are the uh, military personnel who interface with the aerospace subcontractors. Right with the with the military contractors the aerospace contractors who who have been reverse engineering alien technology for decades and those are highly classified projects those are and and just to clarify projects. you're talking about taking downed and recovered vehicles yes and reverse engineering their technology yes technology and recovering the bodies like so, roswell or other stuff roswell, too. Roswell certainly roswell certainly but many yeah. more crashes yeah. besides roswell in which so you think they know full on when we say they let's be very specific (laughs) again there's probably only a handful of people at the pentagon who have access and maybe the intelligence community into the facilities where these things happen like the s4 facility room like the famous one made famous by uh george knapp and uh and by uh, bob lazar but there are many other such facilities these are deep underground military bases dumps and so people talk about the deep state. The deep state is the intelligence community, mainly the permanent permanent Washington that really governs the nation. And it never they're never elected. They, they No one elects them and they never leave. Right. That's permanent Washington. That's the deep state. Well, I have a different term for when it comes to things in this realm, such as aliens and all things bizarre. I call it the dumb state. <laughs> and the dumb state is a reference to. Deep, deep underground, underground military, military bases. bases although there's a double entendre in there so <laughs> um these individuals who are operating who have access who have clearance to go into the these top secret underground military installations these would be the ones who really know what's going on they've seen the technology they've had hands-on the technology 
um, and they they understand the nature of the threat. They understand to some extent the the biological entities that are piloting some of these craft. Some of them are certainly are drones, even the saucers and cigar shaped craft. There may be artificial intelligence involved as well. Very likely is there. There very likely is artificial intelligence. And right. and I'm not talking in the content context of advanced, you know, uh, advanced. Um, aircraft that's been developed by the United States or Russia or China or the UK. I'm talking, talking about non-human alien technology. Yep. That's what I'm talking about. Now, we have recovered crash retrievals and we have from the components of these alien craft derived um, hybridized craft, mm -hmm. advanced aerospace vehicles that, that, uh, that employ the exotic materials that we've recovered from the the downed ufos and conventional components hybridized vehicles because why because i think that and i th and i i can say this with great certainty that that the technology that's fueling that's powering many of these ufos is exotic in other words the components some of the components are exotic and what do i what do i mean by exotic i mean they're not found on the on earth earth yeah so well, these are crazy. these are um extraterrestrial components that are uh, that are um acquired elsewhere in the cosmos <laughs> and so there's a very limited amount of it what we can what we can gather from crash retrievals or what we can substitute with nuclear uh, right. with maybe you know with with nuclear power whatever other kind of technologies we've developed those hybridized craft are in the game as well right okay so those are ours the hybridized craft are ours and there are a lot of them out there and many more and of course the government probably other governments have them as well too other governments yeah. no doubt have their own hybridized craft um i would certainly the uk and russia in the United States, China, maybe China, I'm sure, is feverishly pursuing this technology. Um, I don't know how many UFOs have gone down over China. China is a very big landmass. So I would guess that there have been some incidents and the CCP would have no problem, you know, keeping the lid on that. So, um, <laughs> so, so the point, so the point is there's a mix out there. We're seeing, right. we're seeing drones, we're, you know, extraterrestrial, dr let's, let's put it this way, alien drones. We don't know exactly where they come from. Alien drones, exotic drones, um, exotic craft. That's not ours. And then a hybridized craft that is ours all in the mix. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, there's, there's one question I want to ask, but well, um, I referenced, if, if I may, I referenced I uh, that this all changed in in 2017, December 17th, 2017, to be exact, when the New York Times published an article featuring an embedded video alleged to be footage captured by the gun camera of an F-18 Super Hornet jet that locked onto a Tic Tac shaped UFO, right. moving the at impossible speeds. We're all familiar with the Tic Tac UFO incident. In my opinion, what this Tic Tac is a saucer. It's a flying saucer. It's got gravity distortion around it, just like Bob Lazar talked about. And um, because it's generating, uh, it's generating gravity waves, most likely, and it's there's a distortion around the craft. Um, and this really changed the game. This was the beginning of disclosure um, in America and in the world of the UFO phenomenon. Official disclosure began to happen in in. 2017. Now, I say began to happen because it wasn't some sort of a definitive announcement. It wasn't a stop the press. Right. We have extra. I mean, it seems very intentional. That's a, a extremely slow leap. It's a like slow it's, drip. It's a drip. It's a drip. That's right. Yeah. It's a slow drip. And why would they slow drip it? Because they need to control the narrative. Mm -hmm. Because the phenomenon is burgeoning. It's increasing, and it is to some extent taking a more hostile posture. In fact. The All Domain Anomaly Research uh, Office, which was constituted in 2022, mm -hmm. so this is the Pentagon's office, the the Arrow. Some people say pronounce it Arrow, uh, the uh, uh, acronym. Um, it was it was organized specifically to study the, this phenomenon. They call it UAP, um, right. unidentified either unidentified aerial phenomenon or unidentified anomalous phenomenon. I've heard it both ways. Hmm. But but uh, this this organization was was created specifically to study UFO activity around military bases and military assets. 
And that's what we're seeing in the release today from the Pentagon, because even though we didn't have any military assets on the ground, we were we were doing surveillance over this area of the Middle East with our military drone. Right. And so this and, 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 and that's the context of this orb that was released today, this video. And so that's very intriguing to me because and this this explains why the government has decided to to roll out this slow drip disclosures because they need to control the narrative. Why do they need to control the narrative? Because they cannot control the phenomenon. And the phenomenon is, is as I said, uh, seems to be taking a more hostile posture. And by that, I mean, um, there is much more activity happening around our military, secret military installations, underground military installations. Um, the you know we have we're having UFOs hovering above our battleships, our aircraft carriers, uh, tailing our fighter jets, and so forth. And yeah. that's always happened, by the way. This is nothing new, except to say that it's increasing. Yeah. That this this activity seems to be this kind of activity. What I'm calling, what I'm referring to, as a hostile posture. Yeah. Do you think it's increasing, increasing, or the amount of people with you know cameras ready in their pockets and you know social media and podcasts on stuff is making it just easier to disseminate the information, or both? Both of those things, but it certainly is increasing. There's no question that's increasing. Yeah. But yes, both of those things are happening. As I said in the beginning. You know, we have increasingly better cameras on our phones. Yeah. And so just that that fact alone means we're going to mm -hmm. capture a whole lot more anomalous activity. Yeah. But the but the government has way more than what they're disclosing. They've got the bodies right. on ice. But you, you're saying decades. it's just the top echelon of people maybe within the intelligence community or military community that even know about this stuff. That's right. They would have to have a cosmic level clearance which <laughs> how many individuals many, which do you is, think know about this stuff which is many degrees higher than what the president of the united states has in terms of oh, his gosh. top yeah. secret and in terms of his security clearance i wouldn't it, tell him it, my email password <laughs> you know presidents <laughs> u.s presidents come and go they come and go so they don't have a need to know about the phenomenon right right it's the millet it's 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 and yes you're right it's not just it's the military industrial complex including include elements of the military industrial complex and or include contractors elements of the intelligence agency okay. yeah. agencies who are working with aerospace contractors and right. have been for decades right. all going all the way up to because 1947. the contractors are not can't be subpoenaed basically contractor you can't do a FOIA request to a private company right. it's not part of the government right so there's there's different and plus, it's compartmentalization. All of this is heavily compartmentalized. So when I say there are individuals at the Pentagon who have need to know, who have access to some of these bases, well, they would. Some it's it's so compartmentalized that that maybe they only have access to one aspect of the phenomenon. Okay. You know, is there one person or is there a group of people in the United States who knows all about it? Yes, that was called MJ12 or Majestic 12, and that was an organization that was constituted by Truman. And uh, under the in the during the Truman administration, and they the it was their purview the, the the phenomenon recovering reverse engineering the technology and the cover up because this phenomenon was aggressively aggressively covered up by the government. When I say aggressive, I mean people were killed. Okay, okay? but my question is why is it such a big secret? Are they afraid that like society technology. will collapse if we figure it out or what? Well, that's like, well, let me ask you this. Why was the Manhattan Project such a big secret? We were developing to technology. To win the war. We didn't, yeah. we didn't want anybody to know about it. We wanted to have this technology. Okay. We were developing it in secret to have a tactical advantage, military advantage, technological advantage. Now, gotcha. extend that to the technology that we're reverse engineering from these craft and the knowledge that we're deriving from perhaps the bodies that we're extracting, certainly the bodies we're extracting in some cases from the down craft. And just the knowledge that we're gaining in general about physics. I mean, there's a whole another level of physics that that our physicists know nothing about. It's the military contractors who know about it, not our not, you know, guys like Michio Kaku, who I have a lot of respect for, love Michio Kaku. But Michio Kaku doesn't have need to know. He doesn't have access to the new physics, hmm. to the new elements on the periodic table. <laughs> this is not public consumption. 
This yeah. is not public fair. Right. This this is this is the most top secret classified stuff you could possibly imagine. And what they're leaking to us, they're doing it again in my estimation to control the narrative. And by the way, the narrative is happening and as I always say, that's being framed within the context of a national security threat. I predicted this in my book before the Nimitz incident or before the uh uh, all of the other stuff happened in the wake of the Nimitz incident. So in the interim between Nimitz and the things that happened afterwards, I published my book and I predicted some things. Yeah. And uh, and I said that the phenomenon would be increasingly framed within the context of a national security threat, because it does constitute a security threat more than a national security threat, a global security threat. And you're saying that based on their um just the posturing in terms of no. you know, flying over military installations and stuff like that, or I'm saying that based on the other facet of the phenomenon, the most disturbing one, and the one for which there is even more evidence than what the Pentagon is is providing for the hardware, and and of course I'm referencing the alien abduction phenomenon. Okay, and uh, and uh, the abduction phenomenon is is at the heart of the UFO phenomenon. Now let's backtrack and and recall what? that I said that we have multiple factions in play, including human beings with reverse engineered hybridized advanced aerospace vehicles. Um, but we have alien entities clearly, and when I say alien, I mean non-human. Right. Do I believe that some of them originate from from somewhere other than planet Earth? Ap Earth? Absolutely I do. But is it possible that some of what we are seeing was manufactured within the Earth? Was it mm -hmm. manufactured in secret installations that are not are, are that do not belong or were not built by human beings um, that are that have been here for a very long time? The answer to that question, in my mind, is also yes. And so it's a very complex situation. Yeah, anything's possible, I guess. It's a very complex situation. So um, again, the abduction phenomenon is. If you want to understand why what we're looking at is a threat, it's yeah. not because not 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 just because of the the technology that's um, that's being displayed by these craft and orbs is light years ahead of us. Rather, it's what we know is happening on the craft. It's. It's the agenda, at least of one of these factions, as it relates to abductions and the production of human alien hybrids. Okay. <laughs> we got to go down that one, I guess. That's a deep hole. But before we do, have you seen the movie uh, Fire in the Sky? Yes. That movie wrecked me when I was a kid. <laughs> Are you that. talking about the one with Charlie Sheen? I don't know if he's it's it's about a guy who lives in the Pacific Northwest and he gets abducted. It's supposed to be related based on true story, oh. but it is so creepy, oh, oh, man. Oh, 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 fire in the sky. You're talking about the uh He was um, a logger? Yeah, 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 yeah. I forgot his name. It's one of the most famous abduction stories and I totally I just totally drew a blank on his name. That um, movie but, is so scary, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking uh Walton Something Walton, I think, is his name. I forgot. Totally, forget, I'm drawing a blank on the guy's yeah, name. Yeah, he was That's... a logger in the Pacific Northwest, and but um... you know, his story is, is typical. It's typical. Yeah. Of 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 the abduction phenom of the abduction phenomenon. Now, keep in mind that 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 movie was was there was a lot of creative liberty taken. Sure. In sure. that movie, there, there's a lot of inaccuracies, and and, sure, and sure. you wonder why. Well, how can I say there's inaccuracies? Because there's a. It's a movie after all. You no, know, there's a very large body of data regarding the abduction phenomenon. OK, that's been compiled by extremely competent researchers um, and and uh, and that data, it's conclusive that the, the phenomenon is real. And it's also conclusive that that uh, it's it's the it's a particular faction, the gray aliens. And these are the small gray ones with the bulbous shaped heads and the and the dark almond, the black almond shaped eyes. And they're about, you know, three to four feet tall, roughly. These are the aliens that most abductees see all abductees encounter them right. um and and uh and and they're the ones that are associated with the abduction program and no the abduction program has nothing to do with the united states government nothing it is ubiquitous around the world in other Did words they know about it does the government of know course about they it? do of yeah. course they do 
Yeah, there's something called my labs, military abductions. And so the military elements of the U.S. US military have been abducting the abductees to try and figure out what the Greys were doing. This oh is, That gosh. was going on for decades. That's part of that hostile cover-up, by the way. And, and they did very, very nasty things to the abductees. That's why we're seeing the change from the, we're seeing the change in nomenclature. Part of the reason why we're hearing about UAPs today and not UFOs. There's too much dirty laundry with the UFOs as it pertains mm. to the government. And especially um, the with the abductees and how the government has treated not only abductees, but but uh, UFO ufologists, UFO researchers in general. I, I don't think that it's any stretch of the imagination to us uh, to assume uh, that the, the, that elements of, of the military industrial complex or our intelligence agencies have murdered people over this topic have 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 silenced killed uh ufologists who are getting too close to Jeez. sensitive information so um it's it's serious stuff it's not that way today because it's so much easier just to discredit those people online right it's it's very easy to discredit there's a lot of noise out there today it's not like it was before people were much more focused news stories were there weren't a thousand thrown at you every day on your phone right you know, you heard the news at the same time every day from the same people, and and everybody pretty much knew the same thing in regard to the news. So, so UFO researchers at the time who were trying to blow the whistle on this and and coming forth with evidence and so forth um, were persecuted and killed in some cases. Jeez. By who? Well, I would guess by the intelligence community and the military industrial complex. And yes, that is probably a dangerous statement, but ufologists have been making those kind of statements for decades. And they and they're right. It's, you know, it has happened. Right. So there's a lot and of baggage with you, when you say yeah, UFO. There's a lot sure. to be answered for. Okay, this is a little bit unrelated, but do you think I mean, how infiltrated is the press? I mean, and that's a big statement because the, the press, press is, is huge stupid. today. I, press, but is it is it completely just a controlled propaganda narrative by the deep state or is i mean obviously there's got to be some press yeah, you can trust out there of course uh, most of the press it gets they get their talking points from the cia you know project mockingbird and so our the, the mainstream media is heavily infiltrated by intelligence agency operatives they get their marching orders from the intelligence agencies. That's why they protect them. You ever notice how the press, who is supposed to, more than anybody else, the pre the job of the press is to scrutinize people yeah. in A power. free society needs that to keep yes. things in, in check. They are, they are supposed to scrutinize the individuals yeah. and institutions that hold power in America. Right. Press goes and deeper than power. just selling newspapers and stuff. Press is like a part of now. we need, something we need. That's right. The opposite happens now. The press carries water for uh, the intelligence community. The press defends the intelligence community, will never question it. They 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 accept. Okay, here's a good example. Remember when uh, the press was telling us that Russia blew up its own pipeline, the Nord Stream pipeline? Yeah, Russia did it. And everybody would, a lot of so many people, rational people would think, why in the world? What do the right. Russians have to gain by blowing up their own pipeline? Of course, that was false. Any rational person would have recognized immediately that that was false. But the press, almost across the board, the mainstream press, pushed that narrative. Why do you think they pushed that narrative? Because the intelligence community was telling them to and or the White House. That's why they pushed it. Yeah. So they get their orders from the very power brokers who they are supposed to scrutinize. And, and so we don't have press. And that's why I don't have any faith in this. Uh, in this uh, UFO subcommittee at Congress, it's a dog and pony show. Yeah, we we. I mean, they're gonna they lie to us about something like the Nord Stream pipeline. Of course, they're gonna lie to us about UFOs. <sighs> That's not to say, by the way, that the information that they're releasing about UFOs is false. It's just controlled, heavily right. redacted, and controlled. Right. And so, um, this this uh, this subcommittee in Congress right now. It's just it's just uh, it's a bone. It's them tossing us a bone. Look, we're we're investigating it. And those individuals, uh, Kristen Gildebrand and the others, they may be, you know, zealous and, and genuine in their desire to get to the bottom of this. But it doesn't matter. They're dealing with the Pentagon and they're going to be told only what is approved for them to know and for the public to know. 
They're not right. going to tell you, hey, we have an S4 facility over in Groom Lake. Probably, by the way, they probably moved all of that stuff out of there since Bob Lazar blew the whistle on it in the 90s. But, but you know, they're not going to say we have an S4 secret underground installation facility called S4 at Groom Lake. And we've got, you know, five saucers sitting there. We've had them for decades. And by the <laughs> way, we know X, Y, and Z about them. They'll right. never tell you that. Right. Um, or at least not anytime soon. Maybe in the future, but not anytime soon. Right. And so it's just, they're throwing us a bone. Hey, look, since 2000, before 2017, you could have argued that, that the UFO, that UFOs are a conspiracy. You could have said, look, I know that looks like there's some proof, but there's a lot of, there's a lot of, you know, um, there's a lot of unknown factors here. You know, it's, it's a, it's, it's conspiracy still. You can't say that anymore. Okay. You can't. The controversy is over period (laughs) ufos are real and many of them are not ours period we know that for a fact and again i'm going to say that ufologists have known this for a fact for decades for decades so it's this is nothing new to people who've been students of of the of the phenomenon yeah Um, and it's crazy like it doesn't even seem like people notice or really care it's like okay right that's right because we've been conditioned <laughs> through hollywood yes we, we, i mean we're ready for the we're ready for the alien invasion basically it's Dude. independence day uh yeah um you know it's we've been conditioned and part of that conditioning i think was certainly again re- referencing these agent these the intelligence the intelligence's agency the intelligence agency's involvement with the media also extends to hollywood oh for sure dude have you seen the movie the incredibles yes okay it's basically your like what you think is going to happen in the world in your book <laughs> which one are you talking about okay there's the incredibles a... there's a bad guy who interestingly his name is chronos he's a bad guy and he brings back um he creates a monster like a robot to attack right. the so world it's the first but one, it's the but first really right he he controls the robot but his plan is to be the hero and just deactivate the robot himself exactly exactly yes that's the first that's right that's yeah. the first incredibles because there's i think two or three now but yeah um yeah even in kids point. movies the like conditioning uh i even you know wonder how many of these hollywood celebrities are just controlled by handlers well that seems to be what kanye west was insinuating doesn't it, it does um, I heard that. Now, heard now, that's not to say that all movies and all media is controlled. Right. Certainly not. I would say in Hollywood, maybe, oh, and this is just a shot in the dark, maybe 25% of what, and it depends on the topic. Yeah. It depends, especially, maybe not so much today, but especially back in the 90s, you know, when Spielberg was making a film that most of the country would watch, because that's the way it was. Remember when movies were like that? Yeah. Like, who didn't see Jurassic Park? <laughs> um, most of the right. country would watch the same movies. Now you have all kinds of movies out there that I've never right. even heard, of, you know, because right. of streaming yeah. platforms and there's just a proliferation of, uh, of movies out there. And, mm-hmm. and, and, uh, you know, so it's different today, but back then everybody would watch the Spielberg movie. Yeah. So, if, so if Spielberg's going to make a movie about aliens, the intelligence community is going to come tap him on the shoulder. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, um, and, and Spielberg, by the way, has been extremely interested in, in, uh, in aliens and i've been told he's got alien implants like a little museum with alien implants oh really um, that's the other facet of this phenomenon one especially as in regards to the uh abduction uh, yeah we were heading down that phenomenon. road we kind of got off somewhere else so the abduction phenomenon people are being abducted by gray aliens which means they're being taken usually you know at nighttime not always sometimes actually quite often while they're driving down the road. Hmm. Um, and these are abductees. Abductees are taken from the time they're toddler, toddlers and to old age. And they're taken routinely, systematic, uh, many, 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 many times throughout their lives. They're taken by the greys and they are... Do they remember? They, are, they don't remember most of it? No, because they're not supposed to remember, but they also have what's called screen memories implanted into their minds. In other words, False memories. The real memories are there, but you have to circumvent the screen memories. Right, right. Um, and this may all sound bizarre to people, but there is a scientific body of evidence to back all of this up. 
Yeah. And, and abduction, abductees, by the way, come from all walks of life, from all over the world. You know, you have abductees who are soccer moms in the United States, and you have abductees who are, you know, women in India, you know, thir in third world countries who have who aren't sitting there watching Netflix and who don't know about right. you know, who haven't watched the movies, who haven't who have no uh, they're not tapped into the the zeitgeist of Hollywood. And right. they, they don't think about flying saucers and little gray men like we do in the United States because of movies. So you have people all over the world who are being abducted from every walk of life. You have, you know, you have psychiatrists and doctors who are being routinely abducted. You have from all walk of life, you know, people blue collar, white coll collar from every religion and every culture. But it is hereditary. So if your parents are abductees, then you also are an abductee. Or if one of your You're parents more is an abductee. Yeah. Oh, no. 100% well, for sure. Really? Because I have my my own hypothesis on why they abduct family lines i think it has to do with telepathy and the um uh and the proclivity that certain people have to um telepathic control because the okay. every every all communication on board a ufo is telepathic the grays don't speak they don't use their mouths to speak they communicate only telepathically interesting with human beings and their control is a it's telepathic it's it's a it's that's how they control abductees in part it's also technological and it also has to do with the implants by the way so and um, what is like what what would you say is the um the point of the abduction program and like a lot of the stuff is stuff i've heard you talk about before it's just like i'm kind of trying to steer the conversation to where the, I think people's are going to probably want to go. The purpose of the abduction program is the progeneration of alien human hybrids that are indistinguishable from human beings. So progeneration, what do I mean? I mean that they're using the wombs of our women to incubate hybrid babies. So they're using human uh, genetic material, but they're also using s sperm from males, and they're and they're using um, the the eggs from females, and they're doing something to it in vitro with some sort of an alien component, whatever that is, and then they are taking the zygote and implanting it uh, into uh, a woman's embryo. This happens during the an abduction episode, and th that grows into a a fetus. And that fetus is the woman will carry the fetus about three months before she starts the show. She'll be reabducted, and the fetus will be extracted. That's now, wild. Now you have all kinds of abduction stories in which women who are celibate, okay, women who've never had sexual relations with anyone become pregnant. Wild. Because they're abductees. And there's confirmed pregnancies, lots and lots and lots of them, confirmed pregnancies that come out of nowhere um including involving uh, virgins come out of nowhere um most of the time the women don't know they're pregnant nobody does sometimes the pregnancies are inadvertently discovered the woman has an injury or something gets in a car accident and they find out there's a fetus she has a baby um and oftentimes these babies are are recorded the ultrasounds and whatever uh, the doctor, there's there's confirmation with the doctors, and the and the women are preparing to to carry the baby to term and 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 have a child. Yeah, but it never happens. Why? Because they're they're reabducted before they begin to show. Uh, some are before three months, and uh, the and the and the fetus is extracted, and it's and it's placed in the gestation tank, and it's the rest of its development happens in an artificial womb. And then those babies, those those babies are extracted from the uh, from the artificial womb, from the gestation tank, and they are and they are raised on the craft uh, on the on board the craft. And abductees are often um, the women are often often interact with these hybrid children, their hybrid offspring on the craft. And it's been a process, a gradual process. The the abduction the abduction phenomenon, in my estimation, and in other very good um, um, abduction researchers estimation uh, began sometime in the late 1800s, mid to late 1800s. And so you start seeing people reporting these kind of things. Happening. Yes. 
Yes, and they've and they've and they've been developing, perfecting the alien human hybrid ever since and expanding the program. It's exponential. So then these hybrids come back and like live on Earth? Like do you have you ever met <laughs> I think you ever met someone that was like you're just no, like you dude that guy's know. a hybrid. You well, I mean, <laughs> it could be lots of things, right? Just go to Walmart at nighttime. But yeah. um, but you know, uh, the, you would never know. I mean, if you ran right. into a a a, 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 a and, and but you ever get that Jacobs, David like... Jacobs, Temple University, his historian, um, who was one of the premier abduction researchers, uh, along with others, he he calls these advanced alien human hybrids hybrids. He denominates them hubrids and these these advanced these hubrids um uh his last book that he wrote called walking among us phenomenal book everybody should read it but actually they should start with his first book probably i think it's called secret life and then he's got a few of them in this in this category in this field of research and uh he reports based on his interviews of of hundreds and even thousands of abductees and and also you can you can you can get you can derive the same kind of information some, from some of these other excellent abduction researchers, old school abduction researchers, um, that the the purpose of the program seems to be the creation of these alien human hybrids that are indistinguishable from human beings, except for the fact that they retain the incredible telepathic capabilities of the grays. And so I describe them. If you read the book, you'll see why I say this. But I just they're very, by the way, they lack empathy. They're not human. They lack empathy. They're, they're psychopathic, uh, these hubrids. And they wow. are basically like, you know, like the best way that I can think of it is like Sith Lords walking around the earth who have the power to completely manipulate the human psyche. Weird. And Do you think the government knows about these dudes? I think the government knows about them and is frantically trying to identify them and figure out what, what are they, how far they're embedding into society. Because... They have to learn the, the, the these alien human alien hybrids or alien human hybrids. Um, they have to learn all of the rudimentary things about life on Earth that we learn growing up from toddlers. Uh, how to do all of the most mundane things, how to interact with other human beings without being strange. You know how how to how to uh, how to interact in society, how to, how to drive a car, you know, how to, how to walk into a grocery store and be normal and buy something and check out and walk, could, how to use money. How do to, you think they could have human children, normal human children? No, or, no, they're no. hybrids. They're not human. So they, not yeah. Human. Okay. They look human, but they're not human. They're hybrids. Um, and, uh, and no, it all sounds fantastical, but didn't orbs sound fantastical and you, and the Pentagon talking about UFOs and, uh, and all of this, uh, of course yeah. it's all true. It's all true. And, um, uh, and again, wow. you cannot separate the abduction phenomenon from the UFO phenomenon at large. Indeed. Okay. The so best evidence for the phenomenon, uh, for, for the, the whole phenomenon, the best evidence is within the abduction field okay so they're they are regularly routinely abducting people for this huge hybridization breeding program to make indistinguishable hybrids um but what is the ultimate goal and then maybe yeah, I mean, you wrap that into tran transhumanism well like, how does that relate to transhumanism well that's going to be a difficult leap i mean that takes a long time but um <laughs> but in regard to what is their ultimate goal i would concur with Dr. Jacobs, who believes that the that the ultimate goal of the Greys is planetary acquisition, that they they want this planet for whatever reason, and maybe the enslavement of the human species, not enslavement like you might be thinking, you know, not us in cages and they're eating us or something like that. No, rather some kind of a control over society, over civilization. Um, you know, many abductees talk about uh, experiences with the greys in which in which the greys are showing them that soon we're all going to be together, the, the, their faction and us, the aliens and the humans, whatever that means, that there's there's a, a moment in time coming that's going to be very important to the abductees. They're being prepared and trained for something that's coming in in the future, the change. They refer to it as a change that's coming on the earth. So so they're gearing up for some for something. Um, but let me say again that the Greys are not the only faction in play. There are other things also in play, sentient beings, non-human, 
in my estimation, in fact, I can say, coming from a biblical worldview, I can say that definitively. There are other right. non-human sentient beings in play. Yeah, uh, physical just... beings, because like, you know, for example, the guys that visit Lot in the Old Testament, um, physical beings that come, walk, eat, you know, and hang out, but they're referenced as the angel of the Lord or angels, messengers, These et beings who the Bible ambiguously designates as angels. Right. That's right. So, you know, yes. So angels are... An, Angels are fundamentally extraterrestrial. They do not come from the earth. They were the sons of God shouted for joy when the earth was created. Uh, it's written in Job. And uh, and so they predate us. They preexist us. They're not from the earth. They are therefore extraterrestrial. There's no getting around that. Right. Um, and so those beings are in play. And yes, they do wield technology. Yes, they use air, advanced aerospace vehicles. Um, they're not flying around in chariots in the sky like Santa Claus on his sled right. they, they're using technology just like we use technology they're not genies they can't they can't do whatever they want people ascribe uh these these uh unbelievable capabilities to angels that basically they 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 make them into genies you know like a lad. Right. Like they, they can do whatever they want they can turn themselves into anything they can just materialize they can you know right. th that would be a genie that would be like uh and 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 uh i'm trying to remember the how the uh, the genie referred to himself uh uh you know unlimited unlimited power or whatever he says um um referencing the aladdin cartoon here in my head yeah. i can't <laughs> i can't um, remember you know, so basically, people right. like to ascribe to angels. And you're, these and that's more of like a medieval, unlimited supernatural powers. But that's right. a freaking genie, right? More of a medieval um, understanding of an angel than what might have actually been. Exactly perhaps. right. Exactly right. So, um, where were we going? <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to make the jump into transhumanism. Um, that's quite the jump. It, yeah. Uh, okay, <laughs> it's very difficult to make that jump without going to the very, very beginning. Well, we don't have to go. Really... We don't have to do it. I mean, but well, that's where I was you hoping to get something, to. You, you mentioned something very important. You were talking about the Incredibles movie in which the 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 uh, in which the villain created the threat so that he can come save the yes. world from the threat, and that is indeed the scenario that I that I talk about in my book Birthright. That's sort of like um, you know that's the scenario that I see playing out. And and I believe that you know, because we're talking about when we talk about the UFO phenomenon, as I always say, it's 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 being framed within the context of a national security threat. And I said it's a really a global threat. Now you can understand why it's a global threat because of the abduction phenomenon and the progeneration of alien human hybrids. Those hybrids could be those hybrids could be moving into society. They could be they could be climbing the ranks in the militaries around the world. They could be. Right now, they could be politicians that are that are moving yeah, their way true. up into the prime minister's positions and presidencies and so forth, or not. Maybe they're much more. Maybe there's maybe they've got a lot more to learn before they can get at that to, before they can function at those levels. And maybe that's not even what they're supposed to do or what they're going to do. So, the point is though that clearly we have a problem. We have a hostile faction, the gray aliens, and yes, they are a hostile faction. They're abducting people abducting people against their wills they're using our they're using the wombs of our women of, of the the females of our species to to create these hybrids that's yeah, messed up and then they're infiltrating human society okay these are not good guys no and so this constitutes a threat and also they they're in possession of advanced technology which we can't even touch okay so so this is a threat um but i believe that what what's going to unfold in the future is that this threat is going to be recognized at some point so full disclosure on the gray alien threat the gray alien presence it's going to require a united front you know, all a consolidation of military power globally to fight this threat and i think that's ultimately it's going to be a, a battle we cannot win i mean we're, we 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 can't beat the grays and so it, we're going to require help we're going to need someone to help us in this conflict with the Greys. And at that point, I believe that we're going to see another faction show up. And this would be an angelic faction, but not the good ones. So obviously, those who are familiar with the biblical narrative will know 
that there are good angels and bad angels. You know, really, right. the, the better term is these are sons of God. There are right. good, there are faithful sons and rebellious sons. And the rebellious sons are functioning on earth and have been for a very long time. And uh, and so I believe it's either them or their hybrid offspring. That's a whole long conversation right there um, <laughs> that are going to show up to deliver us from the graves. Let me shut this door back here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's kind of a bait and switch. I mean. Yeah, somewhat of a bait and switch. So. You know, this is what I hypothesize uh, in my book, Birthright, that this is the scenario that's going to unfold. And right. uh, and so who these beings will be received as, you know, I believe that, I mean, to be more specific, I believe that the the leader, I think these are going to be the hybrid offspring of the dragon and his angels. That's a theological From thing revelation. That, that take a long time to unfold. But right. but but the I believe that the leader of this group is is going to be Apollo the hybrid son of the dragon the antichrist okay who 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 we who we call the antichrist the as Bible referenced designates. in the book of revelation the, the right the thessalonians and and the Re revelation we call him the son of perdition the man of sin um that he's going to show up at, probably declaring himself to be christ returning but also the Mahdi, also you know the the, the messianic figure of all these religions he will the be savior that savior um and uh, there i have reason to believe that the vatican is already preparing to receive him apollo and his consort they're not going to float out of the sky or you know come riding in on white horses they're going to show up in saucers advanced do you think, technology do you think the um religious jewish elite would accept him as the messiah that they did not accept jesus to be he, uh, of course he will deliver us from this unassailable threat Wow. Uh, and uh, and save humanity from 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 uh, from certain doom hmm. at the hands of the grays. So everybody will receive these beings as their saviors, you know, except for um, except for people who are prepared in advance not to. So at this point, the church, in your view, esch eschatologically, the church is still here. They have not been raptured or anything yet. Uh, I don't really. You... Con I mean, honestly, I don't really contemplate the rapture because I always say um, that it's really irrelevant when it happens. Right. If it happens, it's kind of irrelevant because you know I don't know if the church is going to be around uh, or whatever. But uh, I know Christ will return to vanquish the beast, to sure. vanquish Apollo um, and the dragon, but. But uh, whether or not we're going to be around is kind of irrelevant because I'm 40 years old. Okay, I'm only right. going to be around for 40 more years anyway. <laughs> so, or so, uh, and uh, so the the chances that 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 one event that that has been looked for by every generation of Christians right. for hundreds of years is going to happen within the window of my lifetime is very small. unlikely. Right. And so it's 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 kind of irrelevant. What what's relevant to me is the resurrection much more than the rapture. Amen. Um, uh, but uh, we can know, so I don't, leave I don't it really there. I have a hard hard line position on the rapture. OK, so this guy comes back, says, I'm here to save you from these gross gay er, gross gray aliens. And um, and then what? Well, I want you to think about the. I want you to think about the juxtaposition here, because you have these grotesque gray aliens, but these are not the native species on board these craft, okay? That that are that are managing the, the abduction phenomenon. The grays, the little gray guys, again with the bulbous heads. Everybody know you know knows what what we're talking about the, with the almond shaped eyes. These these beings are subject to other beings, which are the which appear to be the managers of the abduction program. Uh, Jacobs calls these beings the insectolins. Some people call call them the mantis beings, the praying mantis beings, because they look more like insects than humans. Their heads are shaped more like a, a, a mantis, but probably more like a parking meter, so not so accentuated at the top like a praying mantis. Um, they're much taller than the greys. They are, you know, six, seven feet tall. They're very spindly. They have legs and, and eyes and mouth and, and arms and so forth. They're not like uh, octopuses or something like that, but 
um, but they're they're insectiline in in apparent in appearance. They're insect like in appearance. This I believe is the native species. Uh, the grays, I the little gray guys are probably biological cloned drones. Um, maybe there's artificial intelligence involved in there. Maybe there's a hive mind. But these beings are, I don't believe that they are a native species. I think that they are a created species. Just like worker these, bees. Exactly. That these beings are, the greys are a hybridized species who were created for the, the abduction program. That's all they do, by the way, the greys. They, they, well, they probably do some other things as well, but, but as a, pertains to the abductions they do all of the menial tasks they go and retrieve the abductee they bring the abductee on board the craft they process the abductee they disrobe the abductee they they do the procedures on the, the table procedures and so forth they do all the menial tasks the insectilins are clearly managing what's going on on the craft they're managing the the the, the unfolding of this program the execution of the program um, and so they're very exotic looking. The greys kind of look like weird little bald guys, right? Yeah. But the insectilins are wholly exotic. These are the real freaky looking ones. Scary ones. And so I want, so let's return to the juxtaposition that I was about to, to talk right. about. You have, you have these gray aliens and you have the, the insectilin, they're insectilin overlords, these, these insect-like, grotesque, exotic creatures who are threatening humanity, who are threatening the uh, the nations with this with this covert takeover through these through these hybrids, and then who shows up to deliver us from this terrifying threat? Very beautiful beings, beings who look very much like us. Right, probably the devil's disguise as an angel of light. Or golden right? blonde here. Well, not well, not even in disguise. This is just what they look like innately. Right. Okay, golden yeah, blonde yeah. here, clear eyes, fair skin. Um, beings who who are who are very beautiful and angelic right and and they show up in their technology which which supersedes that of the grays and and they they deliver us so it's the perfect scenario that the the evil ugly um villains uh, in contrast to the beautiful angelic like saviors who deliver us from yeah. them um and and these again these individuals will be received as the messiah messianic messianic figures and uh, will be almost universally worshipped and received as men the saviors of mankind christians nominal christians who are unprepared for this will receive this person as christ returning and uh and 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 so forth wild um okay Do we have time to jump to make that jump to transhumanism from there, or is that we can too talk much of a about stress? transhumanism? We can talk about transhumanism, but I don't think we have time for me to explain how yeah. <laughs> transhumanism relates to this scenario. Yeah, um, the one I just depicted, the alien threat, as I call it in my book, it is very well documented in my book. You know, that I, I I went to great lengths to make sure that I detailed how I see this um, unfolding and how transhumanism interplays with the alien threat yeah. um it's a, it you have to go all the way back to the beginning and talk about the birthright of mankind and dominion yeah, of the earth so and all much. that kind of stuff um and we can do that but that that seems to be to me to be a whole nother conversation okay. however we can talk about transhumanism and because what's happening concurrently with the with this slow drip of disclosure and the burgeoning alien presence and the phenomenon the ufo phenomenon the abduction program and so forth what's what's running concurrent with this and burgeoning right along with it is the is the development of biological technologies that are going to fundamentally transform what it means to be human that right. are going to radically alter human biology and we we call this transhumanism this scenario transhumanism transhumanism is indicative of a transition it's a transitional term in other words on this side of transhumanism you have you have organic human beings on the other side of transhumanism you have post humans right. entities that are no longer fully human they have right. integrated with technology uh, cybernetics they have had genetic modifications um they've got nano nano machines running in their veins 
and other technologies that have been integrated into their biology and they are no longer human. So that's where we're Which headed. has spiritual implications um, on a large scale. Well, it, I mean, of course, yes. And, 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 the, and the implications, again, tie into this whole idea of human dominion on Earth. Right. And, and it's, it's all very complicated. But, but one thing that, w that we can say definitively on your show here today is that the alien, the alien presence, because it's not just the UFOs, okay? UFOs are just hardware. That's not the big deal. The big deal is the alien presence is real right. on planet Earth and human the human species is is on the cusp of a wholesale biological transformation. Those two things are definitive. That's where we are right now on planet Earth. Wow. Those two things are definitive. They are linked together. But um the this this transition into a post human condition has has um has uh magnitudinous Im implications it has implications that are are um unprecedented almost unprecedented because something like what's going to happen what's going to unfold on planet earth has unfolded in the past that's the whole genesis 6 affair which we can that's again that's a whole other subject yeah. we can discuss it at, and we did discuss it mm -hmm. at, at some length in the last program um but as jesus says it will return to times like the days of noah as in the days of noah that's right so so we're talking about at the end. in the words of of Yuval Noah Harari, the 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 futurist transhumanist prophet of the World Economic Forum, within 100 to 200 years from now, there will be no more human beings left on planet Earth. Wow, that's soon. Now, I don't believe that that statement is 100% accurate. There will be human beings because there's going to be holdouts. There's going to be resistance. These people will be ostracized from society. They will not be able to participate in society because they won't have access. You won't be able to access the Internet like we are today. It's going to be through your brain in the future. You're going to interface with it. And right. so people who don't, who are not interfacing with technology through, through their cerebral cortex are automatically isolated. Right. They're automatically uh, outside of society. You'll be because like a society, villager in the Amazon is to us. The, yeah, exactly. Yeah, just exactly. In the dark like ages. The, right. So, and, and that's just, you know, interfacing with technology is, is, is just one component. I mean, I want you to think about in 20 years from now, you know, how is a child, no, not a child, how is a, a young adult um, who wants to go to university going, but who, who is, who is organic and, 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 and is, has not accepted any of these technological integrations into his biology. How is that young adult going to compete with someone his age who has the upgrades, who has the neural link, who has the chips in his cerebral cortex, who's interfacing directly with the compendium of human knowledge on the internet? Yeah. How is this organic human wow. being going to going to compete? You're not. You're done. There will be no there will be there will be no um, important jobs, let's say, yeah. in the future that will be occupied by homegrown organic human beings. Yeah. They will not be able to keep up. They will not be able to compute the way that uh, the, the way that the trans human beings will be able to, because take the knowledge of the internet and plug it into your brain. I mean, uh, you know, we're talking about human beings that can access um, information almost at the speed of light. So the speed of thought. So you can't compete. In fact, when you, when you couple that together with artificial intelligence, yeah, I mean, you, you've got something, you know, uh, approximating a great god at that point in terms of the and, capabilities and the the ability for an entity or a government or a world government or something to control people with that type of technology in their brain is scary because I mean think about it now all they got to do is like control the top 5 google search results on any one thing and that's like 80% of the population is just going to like take that at face value so yeah, like, well <laughs> if you got that in your brain hardwired Hey, that 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 link, that neural link, goes two ways. It goes from your brain accessing information and from something else accessing your brain. Yep. So people who give who people who do these technological upgrades into their biology are are surrendering themselves to the technocratic 
tyranny Why that's going to unfold. That? They're totally surrendering <laughs> themselves. They will become they will become servants of the regime, bo body, mind, and soul. Yeah. So we'll but, be off know, in the mountains hunting gonna... elk and eating bear meat. Uh, I mean, <laughs> you know, you're you're going to be a Neanderthal. You yeah. know, in fact, in my book, in my book, I propose that in the future there's going to be a, a two tier class, and maybe more than that, but certainly a two tier class um, civilization. You're going to have the what I call the neo humans. Neo means new, neo humans, and you're going to have the Nia humans, Nia for Neanderthal. So you're going to have the new humans versus the stupid Neanderthals who refuse yeah. to upgrade, who refuse to evolve, because that's what this is about, directed evolution. And so those of us who are holdouts, we're going to be the, the knuckle-dragging Neanderthals compared to these neo humans. And we're going to be blamed for, we are. I mean, all the disease, all the pandemics, all the woes of the world will yeah. be blamed on the Nia humans. These stupid, ignorant, apish human beings who refuse to evolve. They're dragging the rest of society, the rest of humanity. They're a drag on humanity, a drag on the progress of humanity. What do you think the ultimate conclusion is going to be regarding these people? Get rid of them. Extermination. Yep. <laughs> okay. Yep. And a, and a, and a, and a, and you already you know, saw the the cultural posturing of that during the pandemic, like exactly. If you didn't want to, if you didn't want to, like you know, do whatever they say and wear the mask and take the jab, like you were, you're killing grandma or whatever. You're killing grandma. That's right. So, and you know, this is going to be this group of people, neo humans. It's going to be a significant group of people. It's not like a handful. It'll be. It'll be. Yeah. Tens of thousands, maybe even hundreds of thousands of people who resist, but the vast majority of the human species will transition. But um, but this, you know, in this faction, this resistance will be occupied by people of different faiths, people of different cultures, many, many Christians, many, yeah. many Christians, because we have a we have a very uh, let's say we have. A very definitive reason to resist this oh, yeah. scenario because Christians are all familiar with the mark of the beast and all of the things that unfold in revelation. Whereas maybe other religious people coming from other religions don't necessarily have the sort of textual uh, guidance that Christians do in regard to the things that unfold at the end of the age. So I think there will be a lot of uh, a lot of Christians, we have yeah. a textual basis, let's say, is what I wanted to say. We have a textual basis for resistance, Yeah. right? And so um, there will be a lot of Christians. Ultimately, the war, the vitriol will be targeted, especially at Christians, especially. Oh, yeah, because there's mm -hmm. a whole spiritual, dark, evil side to this, too. So I mean, Absolutely. That's, it's not just... Absolutely. Yeah, it's more than this just technology. This whole thing is being governed. This whole thing is being directed. All of it is being directed to unfold in the way that it's unfolding. And I would say part of that is by God himself, who's allowing it to unfold, who sees the end from the beginning. Obviously, nothing escapes uh, nothing escapes the eyes of God. But it, there's a there is certainly a there's a let's call it a a there is a satanic influence behind all of this. For sure. And so um you know, but think about those two things that are unfolding right now. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Elon Musk said a couple months ago that, you know, Neuralink's going to become available way sooner than people think. They're already yeah. moving into human trials. Oh, my goodness. They've tortured a lot of apes with Neuralink. And look, I get it. I get why Musk is developing Neuralink, because he knows that if we don't develop Neuralink, we Somebody won't be able to compete will. with AI. Yeah. Oh, okay. It could be a That's... runaway scenario. Okay. So in their well, mind, they're they're insulating us from destruction from AI. They they are. He wants to ensure that human the human species remains relevant. That we can compete wow. with AI and 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 control it to some extent. And the only way you can do that is to get smarter, right? And fast. Because there you was got, you have to. It wasn't that long ago that that Google employee guy was fired for saying that they, they have AI that's sentient already. Right. Well, I don't know that AI will ever be sentient, but it will be able to mimic sentience. Yeah. So robots are going to be building robots. AI will be generating more AI. Like AI will be perfecting other kinds of AI. 
it's going to reproduce. So and that and that becomes exponential and then it runs away. Right. It's it's the singularity. It's and, and guys like Ray Kurzweil see this wonderful utopia. Right. But guys like Musk are saying, hold on, this could be Terminator if we're not careful. And so, yeah. you know, Musk is saying, and I'm not like some Musk cheerleader. I just see the, the opposing opinions here are clear. Musk is saying we're not going to be able to keep up. We're not going to be able to control AI. And and Kurzweil is saying, no, 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 that's just alarmism. We'll be able to stay on top of it, you know. And uh, I think Musk is right. I think AI is, is well, AI is a huge component here, huge component. And uh, the Silicon Valley elites believe that they are literally creating God. That's oh why if gosh, you ask Ray Kurzweil, do you believe in God? His response will be not yet. Wow. Because they're creating him, an AI God. And they're going to integrate with him. And so, and, but it's I don't so believe- so wild how the, the, the lines between that, like the spiritual realm and all this stuff starts to blur when it gets, you know, there. Yeah. And I, again, I don't believe that AI is going to ever gain sentience. I think it will mimic. And I think that, you know, AI is probably, in my estimation, not going to turn into this, the, you know, it's not going to turn into Skynet because right. AI has to be given a directive. It does not have a will of its own and never will. It does not have the breath of life. It does not have right. its own consciousness. Right. It will only do and can only do what human beings tell it to do or inspire it to do or direct it right. to do. So it's created um, by human it, beings ultimately. Right. But what happens? And I always tell people, Hey, you know, I want people to realize where we are. Okay. Everyone has seen these, um, everyone's seen the Boston dynamic robots, you know, doing parkour and everything like that. You know, you, you throw a gun at them, they grab the gun and shoot perfect bullseyes at a gun range. Right. And you can push them over first and they stand up, grab the gun and, sh and, sh and fire at these targets, perfect bullseyes. Right. So well, what happens when you, that's a robot. That's a robot running on software. But what happens when you take general artificial intelligence or super artificial intelligence and and put it inside of that robot? Scary. Okay, that's that's coming in the next decade. That's coming. Right now, these robots are being run by software. It is still our AI, but just wait until it's super artificial intelligence. Yeah, that's just uh, wait that's until scary. the artificial intelligence can mimic us in every way, mimic our emotions, mimic everything about us, because a computer can mimic us. Yeah. You put that into a robot that that physiologically looks like us. Right. Or something approximating a human like these Boston Dynamics robots. And man, yeah. you got a, You got something very interesting going on in about 10, 15 years. <laughs> And Giddy. people always say, oh, it's happening sooner than that. But that's what everybody said 10, 15 years ago. It's always a little bit slower than people think. Right. But it is exponential and it is still very, very fast um, in regard to the development of this technology. To say nothing, to say nothing of nanotechnology. Yeah. Nanotechnology, wow. you maybe have the ability, instead of putting artificial intelligence into a rigid robot, you may be able to to build something that's that is able to morph its its structure. You know, nanobots, nanotechnology is totally different. It's not it's not like a, a robot. You can you can yes. build a nano skeleton. You know, theoretically, in the future, you build a a nano skeleton. Okay, have I know I keep referencing. I know I keep referencing kids movies, but it's crazy because it's like it's like they're it's all connect, like they're using kids movies to show us exactly what they're doing. But anyway, have you seen the movie um, Big Hero Six? Yes, I have. He literally I, does I that. The bad the guy has tiny nanobots that just that's his power. Yeah, that's right. Yes, right. <laughs> all right. the kids movies, like every kids movies I see, is like. Uh, and those nanobots are very big. I'm talking about you know you're talking about robots that are the size of a cell. Yeah, that's insane. and uh, and that technology, it, you know, it's the convergence of all these technologies. That's why they call this the hybrid age, because all of these technologies that for decades were running on individual tracks are now beginning to converge. Yeah. And when they and, converge, we will we will see the wholesale redesign of human biology. Yeah. And we're we're already being we're already having it jammed down our throat with transgenderism, I feel like is a precursor to. OK, just be able, you know what I mean? Like. 
That's why they're cramming okay. that down our throats. I did a I did a lecture at my conference, the Birthright Conference, that took place last year in Nashville, Tennessee. I don't talk about it often. I don't know why I don't. I did a lecture, um, and I couldn't put. I can't put it on YouTube. I can't put it on on. Oh, you'll get I canceled. On Rumble, but I put this. I put. I did this lecture, and and I, it's you can go rent it. You can rent the conference, and you'll see it. And I talk about the direct association between trans humanism and transgenderism For sure. it is there's a direct correlation there's a reason why this is happening and it will blow people's minds and if you if and i talk about the foundation of this which was laid in the 70s um by a woman named donna haraway and it's called cyborg theory nobody knows about this but it was it has but it's been being taught in at the university level for decades it's called cyborg theory and cyborg theory basically means that you can be anything you want and 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 you you can it's it's there's no it's there's no differentiation between between men and women between yeah. between uh, uh humans and animals or between humans and machines yep it's called cyborg theory and I talk about it in this lecture. Nobody really knows about it because even though, you know, we had some 500 people at the conference and a lot of people have rented the conference, I never talk about it. But you can rent this conference yeah. online if you go to, I think it's the birthrightconference.com. Let me double check that real quick. Yeah, because it just feels like it's such a assault on, on the family, our identity as humans. Um I yeah. was thinking it, it's the other and day. Again, I was just thinking it's got to be related, just a preparation. I unfold all this in this lecture. I've never talked about it publicly because I can't. I, it would just get censored everywhere. Um, you can you can go to Birthright Conference, not the, just birthrightconference.com, and you can uh, you can rent that uh, uh, you can rent that conference. And it's yeah. me, Joe Allen from the Steve Bannon Show, who's one of the world's experts on transhumanism. Uh, Gary Haven and Mankow Mueller, and we and we talk about uh, um, we talk about all kinds of different things, but especially we talk about transhumanism and aliens, and and you yeah. know, kind of like a lot of stuff we're talking about today. But I don't talk about this association between the two things we just mentioned often because it gets strikes on YouTube, it gets canceled, it gets taken down. But I did at this conference. Yeah. And I'm telling you, people have never heard what I say at this conference. The connection is yeah. the connection is conspicuous. It's yeah. there. Speaking and of connection, the fact that big tech wants to keep all this stuff. I mean, that's like their number one like opponent of like you said, if you even talk about this, you're canceled. Yeah. That's right. And again by big tech. Just think trans humanism, trans genderism there's a reason it's going sure. somewhere it's cyborg theory okay because ultimately it's not a man can be a woman ultimately it's there's no difference between a man and a woman there's no difference between a man yeah. and a machine we're just beings there's no difference between a man and an animal so you can splice those genes all day long there's no difference we're all just biological creatures you yeah. know it doesn't matter if you plug your cerebral cortex into the internet because you're just a biological construct you're you're um, you are uh on a on a a continuum you can you're be fluid. whatever you want on this continuum and that sounds crazy except for the fact that we're going to have the technology to actually do this wild okay and we're just seeing the beginning of it right now so make no mistake i really want to ask about chimeras <laughs> well that we've been talking about chimeras i mean that's the a chimera is the blending of two different biological right. creatures yeah the artificial blending of these creatures and and uh and that's what uh that's essentially what post-humanism is is that Human happening beings, in the dumb state as well Oh, yes, I believe so. Of course, that's just rank speculation, but I believe some very, very unimaginably dark things are unfolding uh, beneath our feet, miles beneath our feet in not only these deep underground military bases, but these deep underground cities. Nobody has access to them. They're beyond the jurisdiction of the of the United States. Nobody, there's no, there's no oversight. Congress doesn't have oversight over the dumbs. President of the United States doesn't even have the clearance to enter one of these facilities. Jeez, dude. So, um, just you know, again, that's that's sort of a whole other conversation too. But uh, 
Yeah. Um, wild. I think we've given your audience a lot to think about. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Definitely, definitely. Dude, I appreciate your time, man. Um, very interesting conversation. Um, so many places it can go. But uh, thanks again, man. It's uh, great talking to you. And uh, where can people find your book and stuff like that? My book is on Amazon.com, Birthright, Coming Post-Human Apocalypse, and the Usurpation of Adam's Dominion on Planet Earth. You can also get it on Walmart.com, BarnesandNormal.com. You won't find it in the store, but you'll find it on their website. Um, and uh, you can find me on Twitter and on Instagram. My handle is always the same. Timothy Albarino, no spaces, dots, or lines between, or underscores between my first and last name. My YouTube channel Timothy is Timothy Albarino. Um, I've got a lot going on on my YouTube channel. Um, I'm doing all kinds of things too all the time. Conferences. Yeah, you got any I've conferences got some... or trips or anything coming up? Well, I'm not yet prepared. Well, I'm doing a a, a a expedition to Peru, which sold out in a day and a half. Wow. Um, um, that's sold out. That's happening in June. But I've got another thing that I want to announce here. I'm really, really excited to announce. I got to wrap up the Sweet. last details. Got something coming. So um if people want to be in the loop on that track with me go to my website and and subscribe to my mailing list number one number two subscribe to my youtube channel and number three follow me on instagram and twitter um and you'll be hearing about something shortly but oh i thought um, you were gonna drop it here <laughs> no i can't i don't have i don't have all the details uh, okay. buttoned up on it yet uh, so i can't but uh is it some kind of trip or something or can you even say it's that? going to be an event happening an event. outside of the united states in a Ooh. very very awesome place nice so, okay all right we'll be um, on the lookout for that yeah so that's uh i'm and i always got stuff like that going on that's why people they should track with me if you're just popping in in and out every now and again you're going to miss these things i'm doing because they they come real quick they're like i'm sitting here and i'll say hey i'm going to do this and i put it together and then announce it boom it fills up yeah and then people miss out so sweet well hopefully I'm going to get you out in the woods with the rifle in your hand at some point. Well, I live in, uh, I live in the right place for it. <laughs> I know. Maybe we'll run across a gray alien. We can see how they do against a 300 wind mag. <laughs> well, you, there's no way you're going to hit a gray alien with a, with a rifle. I can tell you that you'll okay. be standing there. You'll be blinking your eyes, wondering what just happened for the last hour <laughs> with no uh, recollection of that. Uh, so of many that. jokes. I could say right here, but I'm not going yes, to. Yes, there are many jokes. I'm not going to do that. Um, all right, man. Well, thanks again for your time. I appreciate you, dude. Um, and hopefully we'll be talking again soon. Thanks for having me on. God Looking bless, man. To it. Yep. All right.